Hello, uh, today we are going to start and in order to finish chapter three and if we have a time we will go for chapter five, multi-degree of freedom system. So let's get back to chapter three and uh, let's start with problem 3.28. Three point twenty eight. So, uh, an electric motor of mass sixty eight. So, there is a basically an electric motor which is installed on a So there is a motor and basically in order to remove, in order to reduce the vibration uh, being transferred from the base ground to the system, we put some isolator, some rubber pads here in order to prevent vibration, basically reduce vibration from reaching uh, from the base basically to the mass right so the total mass is the total mass is given mass is uh, 68 So the, this is, the, this one is basically uh, isolator block. This is going to be our isolator system. So, so in some of isolator, we use some block and in very simple case, we use only just simple uh, mass and spring system. And we attach our main mass or we have a block and spring and mass. And we basically attach our main mass here. So. isolator and isolator. So here, so the isolator block mass is given as 1200 kilogram and natural frequency of the total assembly, omega n of total assembly is given as 160 cycle per minute. Damping factor is given also 0 0.1 and if unbalance in, in the motor result in a harmonic force of F100 sine of, sine of 31.4 T and determine the amplitude of vibration. So amplitude of vibration we are looking for and the, the force transmitted to the floor, force transmitted to the floor. So uh, So basically we are dealing with a force excitation problem. We have a force excitation F naught 
sine omega t, and we know that how to find the response. Response basically is nothing but x amplitude multiplied sine omega t minus phi. We are looking only for uh, x of t, x sine of omega, omega t, omega t minus v. So for the x, we know that x is simply f naught. We have f naught over k over S square root of one minus R squared squared plus two zeta R squared. So so At first I said we could find R, right? Omega over omega N, omega over omega N, and omega is given just here. You could go to the, here is given, omega is given here. And we need to only find the Omega n, basically f of n in natural frequency in hertz in cycle per minute is given. And if we divide by 60, we will have cycle per second or hertz. So 120 divided 160. divided by 60, let's go FN in Hertz. So Omega N is two pi FN. Two pi 160 over 60 is 16.75. Radian per second. So, if you take a look at here, in order to find amplitude here, we need to find R, zeta is given, and also K. So, for K, K is M omega N S squared. So, M basically is given and we have the M, so the total assembly. So this is the total assembly because uh, if you take a look at here, M is going to be M of motor plus M of isolator block. So 1200 plus 68. K is M. Omega squared. On total, we have the K 3557. Five three twenty five newton per meter. So we found K and we have zeta and R. R is omega over omega n.
Omega is in the problem is given 31 it is given to us directly and over omega and we calculate as 16.75 therefore r is 1.875 and all you have to do is just basically plugging all the parameter into the amplitude formula and amplitude will be obtained as 1.105 multiplied 10 to the power minus 4 meter. So x is calculated. The first part is done. We were supposed to find amplitude and then force transmitted to the ground. So if you take a look at here, total mass, there is a k, isolator kc. So if I cut the system from here, basically we have K, Kx and Cx dot, Kx, Cx dot, and we are looking for force transmitted to the ground. Force transmitted to the ground is nothing but Kx plus Cx dot. So force transmitted to the ground will be passed through a stiffness and damper. So if I assume the response is X sine of omega t minus phi Therefore, x dot would be x omega cosine omega t minus phi. So if I plug in here, f of t would be k x sine of omega t minus phi plus C X omega cosine omega t minus phi. So basically we are dealing with a, we are looking basically, we are looking for the magnitude of force transmitted. So F basically is A sine theta plus B cosine. So magnitude of force transmitted is a square root of a squared plus b squared right therefore force transmitted to the ground would be a square root of k x squared plus c x omega a squared if i factor out from the term the common term amplitude x I can cancel out and k squared plus c omega a squared I can further uh, factor out k for the sake of simplicity and I have 1 plus c omega over k a squared right so I can further simplify c omega over k term so K is nothing but M omega N A squared. So I can write C omega M omega N omega N and therefore I can multiply numerator and denominator by an two and this is two M omega N. So uh, this is zeta equal to two zeta r. 
So if I substitute the above relation, therefore f of t is x amplitude stiffness multiply one plus two zeta r s squared. On the other hand, you know better than me what is the uh, amplitude, right? Amplitude is f naught over k over one minus r squared s squared plus two zeta r s squared. So if you substitute x here, therefore you could easily find transmitted force like F naught. This is how you have to prove this relation if it is not given to you directly in the formula sheet. So it's very easy to drive two zeta r squared. So we have K basically um, here. We obtain X in the above, we obtain K. We have obtained Zeta, we are given Zeta and we also obtain R. All you have to do is just plug in and find the, this is, I wanted to show you how to drive to this formula. And here you can easily find force transmitted K thirty five five nine Newton per meter multiplied by X one point one zero five ten to the power minus four S square root of one plus two zeta is given zero point one multiplied by R which is one one point one eight seven six S squared. Finally, the force transmitted is 40, 42 Newton. So if you take a look at the question, the question F naught was, F input was 100 Newton. Therefore, you could easily say that, just for your information, uh, you could say Uh, the transmissibility is 42 over 100 or the isolation effect, vibration isolation is 100 minus 42 is 58% percentage of isolation. So this is how we uh, found, how we have found amplitude. We have a basic formula for a force vibration and for transmitted force, we use Kx plus Cx dot and we found the transmitted force as 42 Newton. So let me know if you have any question, otherwise we will go for uh, next problem, which uh, is go back to the green part when we you were driving uh, two zeta r. Yeah. Here. No. Upper. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to to see it. Uh, I just wanted to further simplify uh, this. Yeah. Uh, this term in order to reach the so, uh, two zeta r. Yes, yeah, exactly. So 
I just uh, I just insert k as k as m omega n squared, and then I wrote omega n squared as multiplication of basically two omega n omega n multiplied by omega n and uh, we know that zeta is zeta is uh, c over c critical and c critical is 2m omega n uh, here c over 2m omega n i just insert zeta so 2 zeta r and if you take a look at here, I just call it R. Frequency ratio is omega over omega n. Yeah. Thank you. You're, so, okay, next problem is point twenty nine. So a sensitive instrument is to be installed. A sensitive instrument like M is going to install on a floor. Why mass is given one hundred thirteen kilogram? is going to be in a cell on a location where the acceleration is given. Acceleration is given. Fifteen point twenty four centimeter per squared second square at a frequency frequency of the base is subjected to a frequency of twenty hertz. It is proposed to, to mount the instrument on a rubber pad, which is a like an isolator, rubber pad. We could model any isolator by an stiffness and damper. So K is given, K of the isolator or rubber pad is given 2,802 Newton per centimeter. And also, Zeta is also given 0 0.1. So it is asked what acceleration is transmitted to the instrument. So what acceleration is transmitted to the instrument? X double lot. So for the sake of simplicity, we could assume the vibration, which is sub, which is comes from the base Y can be represented by a simple harmonic wave. So therefore, I have the so if I ask you why is like sinusoidal wave, I can easily take derivative y dot is y omega cosine omega t and acceleration is minus y omega s squared sine of omega t. The acceleration from, from the base is directly given to us. So the magnitude of acceleration from the base is directly given to us 15.24 centimeter over second squared, which is basically equal to y omega s squared, the magnitude, right? The magnitude if the maximum of sine is one and therefore I can easily find the y. The amplitude of vibration coming from the base is acceleration over omega s squared, omega is given. Two pi f 
20 hertz. Y is 0, 0.00. You have to change it to the uh, meter at the end. So let me just give it as centimeter. So you have to change it to a meter. So we have the transmissibility formula. You can directly relate the vibration from the base to the mass. You could easily take advantage of transmissibility formula, which is amplitude of mass or an instrument over Y base. So which is equal to one plus two zeta r squared plus two zeta r squared Z zeta is given zero point one and You could easily calculate R frequency ratio as omega over omega n. Omega we already calculated as 125.66 radian per second. Omega n can be simply found from K over M, K over M. K is given, you have to, uh, change it to a Newton per meter, which was given first as Newton per centimeter over mass is given. So omega n is 49.796 radian per second. So you can plug in here. R therefore is 2.5. So if I plug in R as 2.52 and zeta as 0 0.1, I can easily find transmissibility X over Y. You could easily multiply. So transmissibility can be obtained as, so let me plug in one plus two zeta, two zeta r, one minus r, squared squared plus two zeta which is equal to zero point two seven eight. So this is the X over Y is Zero point two seven eight. You could multiply numerator and denominator by omega squared. I can call omega squared omega squared x is acceleration, which is which the instrument sends, receive, and omega squared y is acceleration of the base, which is given to us. Therefore, acceleration that mass receive is transmissibility multiplied by acceleration from the base which is simply given us at first. So 
15.24 centimeters. Right. Right. 15 point. Fifteen, which is going to be three point six six centimeter second s squared or zero point three one six six. So this is a uh, how you can find the transmitted acceleration, basically. <laughs> or you could easily, f you can easily find, you have X over Y obtained, and X you can find T transmissibility multiplied by Y and you could say easily acceleration is omega squared transmissibility and y, which we first obtain. So both methods are the same. So this is how we basically find the acceleration. So let me know, please, if you have any question. Vibration vision. Three point four to three. So let me uh, let's go for the next problem is three point four to three. So please. Be aware that these vibration measurements are very, very important. Every semester I can tell you, uh, I saw this in the midterm final vibration measurement. It's very, very important. Measurement. So try to take a look at in the last part of the chapter three and just go over the curve. Curves are very important. And please solve problem 3.42 as well. And accelerometer and seismometer. These are very, very important. So three point forty three. And on, it says, and on that vibration pickup, vibration pickup, it means just seismometer. It is not accelerometer, vibration pickup, amplitude pickup. Vibration pickup is basically seismometer. Measuring, it's going to measure the amplitude, seismometer. Where, and on damp vibration pickup have a natural frequency of one cycle per second. So the natural frequency of this instrument is given as one cycle per second or simply one hertz. Is used to measure a harmonic vibration of four cycle per second, which is four hertz. If the amplitude, if the amplitude indicated by the pickup, relative amplitude between the pickup mass and the frame, the relative amplitude which we normally show with Z, Z is given as 0 0.052. What is the correct amplitude, 
correct. So basically for vibration pickup, suppose we want to measure vibration over surface Y. So some vibration from the from the base, such as earthquake or from the wind, which can induce vibration is coming to the surface Y and we want to basically measure vibration that received to the surface Y, we could take advantage of a seismometer basically. Seismometer you could install over the surface Y. If you open the seismometer, you will see there is a stiffness, there is a mass, and there is a damper like this. You could model the seismometer by K spring and damper. So there is a PZT, PZ, piezoelectric device here embedded in this basically seismometer which which translate any displacement into a voltage you could read from the seismometer the amplitude that received to the surface so this pzt this just relate voltage to the displacement and it's very very sensitive this pzt to the uh, displacement and relate displacement to the voltage and you, you can read from this uh, the monitor the value of vibration, which is estimated, which is which is approximated by this device, which is little bit different from the real amplitude, which is coming from the earth, from the surface Y, right? So here, let's call the amplitude of mass as X. This seismometer can sense only relative motion, x minus y. And so you, you can see consistency as x over x minus y. If you take advantage of second Newton of law for this mass, summation of forces applied in the direction of x is mx double dot, which is equal to minus kx minus y minus cx dot minus y dot. Therefore, you will see to this, and as I said, assume the vibration coming from the base as y sine of omega t, and therefore you could develop the equation of motion for the instrument mz double dot cz dot plus kz equal to m omega squared y sine of omega t. You could treat it like a force oscillation, right? So you know that the response z is m omega squared y over over k minus m omega squared plus c omega squared or simply, simply z is y r squared. So this, this, model, this mathematical equation of motion can give you a hint how this instrument is going to work basically which is highly dependent on value of zeta and r. So take a look at here. So z is basically, so we are heading to estimate and approximate and predict the amplitude, right? So Z is 
predicted amplitude by the device and y is correct measured amplitude of a correct amplitude, right? Which is equal to R squared over one minus R squared plus two zeta R squared. So if you take a look at here, right hand side, if R become max and goes to the infinity, if R goes to infinity, Z over Y will limit, limit the right hand side will go to the one, right? Therefore we could, this is, which is very, very real. Uh, it is very ideal, Z would be Y. We can definitely say what is the real vibration coming from the amplitude of vibration coming from the base, which is not the case in reality because there is some error and we have some zeta in our system. And you have to basically calculate the error. Error is very important. Uh, if I want to simply and briefly, because we don't have time and I give you, please go over the figure in the text with very, very important. You have to always calculate the error or range of what is the range of frequency which correspond to this error? What kind of frequency this device can measure if the error, if the error of this instrument is lower than, for example, two percent? So these are some questions that you may face in the exam. It's very, very important. So briefly, if I want to plot z over y, you have to plot this. z over y, we know the formula, right? z over y, if you put r zero, numerator becomes zero, denominator become one, therefore the graph will start from zero, right? So, so depending on value of the zeta, This is one, and for seismometer, the more you increase R, the more you increase R, the more you have exact seismometer, as I show you here. R, if, you go, if R go to infinity, you will have very, very exact, basically, seismometer, which can definitely gives you the exact, uh, the exact amplitude. So here you have to, based on some error, you have to correspond some omega. So this was uh, an introduction. This, this, there is a, the same introduction for accelerometer. There is no any time here to just describe all of them. And please go over it in the textbook and read the textbook very, very carefully. So the error, if I want to give you very simply So error is Z over Y over, so depending on the value of theta, C over Y divided by Y multiplied by 100 is the percentage of error, 2% for example. For Z, if data is lower than 0 0.7, Z greater than Y, and if data is equal or greater than 0 0.7, Z lower than, you have to go through the figure you will see, you have to be aware of these figures. So here, 
for example, this curve, zeta 0 0.9. So here, of course, in this region, y is greater than y, z, z, y greater than z. In this region, for example, zeta is 0 0.1, z is greater than y. It gives you hint for calculation of range of omega. So it gives you how, I will tell you how. If you write z over y as r over s squared of one minus r s squared s squared plus two zeta r. So if, I don't know what happened to, today is just this one tries to, okay, so z over y. So if z greater than y, depending on the value of zeta, you could say what? You could say r squared greater than one minus r squared plus two zeta r squared so therefore you could come up with a range for omega for example you will reach to this point omega is greater than one, omega is greater than four, therefore omega should be greater than four. So this is some kind of problem you may see in this chapter, it's very, very important. Please go over the accelerometer. We don't have time today to go over it. Just simply, I wanted to give you an introduction. Let's go back to the problem, 3.43. We are going to find correct amplitude, correct amplitude. So there is no inf information regarding, okay. It says on damp vibration. When it says on damp vibration easily, zeta just put zero on damp vibration, pick up on damp vibration instrument. You have to notice this is a seismometer as I told you in the first part. So if you put the measured value equal to true value multiply R squared, this is the formula, right? Just simply plugging all the parameter you have, that's it. One minus R squared, S squared plus two zeta r square zeta is zero. Simply just make it zero. Therefore, measured value over true value is r squared over one minus r squared. So what is r? You can easily and simply calculate frequency ratio. Omega over omega n two pi f over two pi fn. Two pi multiplied by four, two pi multiplied by one. The natural frequency of an instrument is given, right? And this four, simply and easily, you can find the true value, the correct value, this is the correct or true value to amplitude equal to one minus R squared, R squared Z is the value you read from the from the seismometer, which is given. equal to minus, minus 0 0.048 
0.75 centimeter. This is the correct amplitude you are supposed to read from the, the this is the real uh, amplitude coming from the base, the correct amplitude. By some error, we estimate this uh, basically. So another important quick note for size one meter or amplitude pickup, I said the more R is greater than one and R is very, very big, the more accelerometer, uh, size one meter is very exact. So R is become very high. It means omega over omega n become very high. We don't know about, we don't have any information regarding future excitation, right? But we know about omega n and in order to increase this fraction, we basically need to reduce omega n. Omega n is k over m. Therefore, we have to increase m. And seismometer or device is very, very big. Seismometer. On the other, on the other hand, on the contrary, the accelerometer, you have to decrease R. Therefore, you have to increase omega n. For increasing omega n, you need to decrease m. The accelerometer are very, very, very small devices. So just a quick note. And I want to ask you to please go over the textbook and read very carefully the two figure, one for accelerometer and one for uh, seismometer. Try to look out what is the range of different zeta, y greater than z, z greater than y, and solve question 3.42, calculate the error and range of frequency. These are very, very important questions, basically. Uh, just let me know if you have any question, otherwise we will go for the last problem of the chapter 3, Point. So it says a manufacturer of vibrating measuring instrument gives the following specification for one of its vibration pickup. Frequency range, velocity response flat from 10 cycle per second to 1000 cycle per range of frequencies given to you. Sensitivity is given also 0 0.096 voltage per centimeter per second. Voltage divided by velocity is sensitivity. It says both volts and velocity in RMS value, both volt and, and velocity voltage over velocity. This sensitivity. It says both is given in RMS value. RMS value, it means root mean square. 
root mean square if we have a signal, for example, for the voltage, voltage V max and V mean, we could simply give a mean value for any alternating signal like this as an RMS value average 0 0.77 V max is going to be V RMS, which is a basically vibration or commonly measured by RMS meter. So just a brief, quick note, VRMS 0 0.707 Vmax. In reality, we have the Vmax in alternating current, but we want to show it in a DC format, in a direct format. So, RMS value root mean square is the S square root of the mean S square value. Is the S square root of mean S square value. Mean S square value is the chapter one, if you can find this formula, A S squared, where period zero point, period one half, one minus, cosine omega, two omega, two omega t, t, t. Finally, it's going to be one half a squared. I forgot to mention here, basically, mean square value is limit t over infinity, one over period, integration of zero, to t x squared of t that equation 1.32 chapter one, where x is a sine of omega t. This is the extra information. I wanted to inform you that where RMS value is coming from. So s square root of mean square value S square root of mean square value. This is mean square, S square root of mean square would be RMS. So, just a brief introduction to the problem. And we want to get back to the question. I read some, I read three specification, frequency range, sensitivity, and also maximum stroke that this instrument can be tolerated, can tolerate, right? And sensitivity. voltage centimeter per second and
Do you hear my voice? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, sorry, I thought the internet is okay. Uh, so here before pr proceeding, um, do you see on top your uh, top right? There's a logo with a hand in a pen and a pen in it. Okay. Uh, okay, I see. I see that. Right. You should draw the touch. I don't know, uh, stylus maybe orientation because um, you're selecting the square with the arrow. That's why it's uh, it's uh, it's not right. Yeah. So which one I should choose? I think uh, the stylus maybe try one of them. I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay, a stylus orientation. Okay, I have to choose. I I, uh, I don't know. I, or unselected. Okay. Yes, uh, because I, I corrected this uh, specific these uh, options previously, and I have to. It's okay. Otherwise, okay. Uh, I see your point. Okay. Because I, the university didn't give me any. Uh, tablet. I I have to borrow from one of my friends two times per week, and he changed the option. So I think now it's correct. So thank you for uh, correction. I don't know why it's try to turn. Yeah, uh, it's, okay. it's okay. Left. Okay, left hand side. Oh, no, it's going to yeah. okay. So we have to okay. This question has two part. Part A. This instrument was used to measure vibration of a machine with non frequency of thirty. 30 cycle per second and so if a reading if a reading of 0 Uh, zero point V is if a reading of zero point twenty four volt is indicated, determine the RMS amplitude. RMS amplitude. Part A. Part B. Could this instrument be used to measure vibration of a machine with non frequency of 12 cycle per second and double amplitude, double amplitude of 0 0.8 centimeter. Give reasons. Okay, let's report the first part. So, as I said, the Amplitude the output voltage, which is in RMS value. All already in RMS value, there is no any additional calculation. So amplitude is sensitivity. Multiply by velocity. Therefore, velocity can be obtained as 
output voltage, which is read from the device 0 0.24 over sensitivity, which is given 0 0.096. Zero point zero point zero twenty four over zero point zero nine six, which is going to zero point twenty five centimeter over second, which is based on RMS value. Because the, sensi the sensitivity is in the RMS value and the amplitude also is in the RMS value. Therefore, numerator is in RMS and denominator is in RMS. The velocity would be in RMS value. So this is the velocity. And for a harmonic excitation, we know that velocity is y omega is velocity, right? Therefore, amplitude is velocity over omega. Velocity we obtained, velocity we obtained as 0 0.25, 10 to the minus two meter per second over two pi and frequency we are going to measure is, we are going to since it's 30 hertz, which is given. So the amplitude is 1.326, 10 to the minus five meter. RMS value is basically, is the effective value of a time varying voltage. So, This is the RMS amplitude. This is the RMS amplitude. And part B So if I want to draw so this is the maximum amplitude that this device can basically measure. So if you go through the device, you will see that there is a small mass here, which is a maximum amplitude that this mass can tolerate, right? Can sense. So in the first part of this, in the specification given, for the amplitude range that this instrument can pick up, it basically says X max is almost no lower limit to maximum a stroke between a stop of zero point, stroke is basically zero point six stroke. So the amplitude is 0 0.3 centimeter, which is wrongly mentioned in inch. 0.3. Does this device, uh, can this device measure the vibration coming from the source which has the amplitude of 0 
for double amplitude of 0 0.18 centimeter. Please uh, help me to answer this question. Does this device can measure the vibration with double amplitude of 0 0.80 centimeter? Is it possible for this device to measure this amplitude? No. Yes, because this, this mass inside cannot tolerate this amount of uh, displacement, so you have to say no, it is not possible. So basically we are done with chapter three and in the chapter five, we are trying to uh, give some method for deriving and solving system with multiple degree of freedom system. So if you have any question from chapter three and you can ask now. So try to go read the accelerometer and seismometer. These are very, very important. And in the exam, you will see some questions. Even final, maybe you have some meter and final. So, So again, for multi-degree freedom system, again, you can use uh, Newton law for linear motion and Euler formula for rotational motion. And also at the end of the chapter of five, I think you will learn how to derive uh, equation of motion using Lagrange. In the exam, I think you will be directly asked to uh, derive equation of motion using Lagrange. So, Otherwise, for a sim simpler problem, you could easily take advantage of Newton law, which is very fast for fast method for calculating. I have a question. Yes, uh, uh, I have a question from you uh, before. Sorry, yeah. uh, have, have you ever written uh, to this chat chapter five? Uh, yeah, we we started it um, yesterday. Yes, sir. okay. So give me your question. Uh, what's the best method to solve the uh, equation of motion? To solve or, or to derive the equation of motion? Yeah, to, to derive. So it depends. It depends on the problem. Uh, for me, Newton is very simple, simple method, Newton and Euler formula. But in some cases, uh, it is better to, uh, for linear for linear motion, you could easily take advantage of the second unit of law, which is very easy. And for rotational motion, summation of momentum is equal to J theta double dot around point, point of rotation. And in some cases you are directly being asked to derive the equation of motion using Lagrange. You have no other choices. You have to derive the equation of motion. And for very complex uh, system that contains several rigid links, it is better to take advantage of uh, effective stiffness and effective mass using energy method, uh, deriving total and writing total potential energy and uh, kinetic energy, and then find effective stiffness and effective damp, effective mass in order to derive a quotient of motion. But I think you will not be directly asked using, for example, uh, the method we solve for virtual work. But the, the most effective one is, to me, is Newton law and Euler formula, as well as uh, Lagrange. 
these are very uh, straightforward approach for deriving equation of motion. As an example, if I want to, uh, for example, in, in, in this chapter, even for multi degree of freedom system, for a simpler case, we could easily take advantage of uh, second Newton of law. If you let me go over this problem, I will tell you how to drive. In the, in the problem 5.2, it says, determine the normal modes and frequencies of the system shown in this figure. So here, if you take a look at, there is a simple spring mass system, which can have linear motion, basically, M. So for, for this system, it is very, very straightforward to just take advantage of second Newton of law. It's very easy and it's straightforward for deriving the equation of motion. For me, the, the most simplest one is Newton law and Euler formula. These two equations can be used simply to derive equation of motion. For example, here we don't care, we don't want to use the rotation because we have only linear motion. Since we have two masses, these two masses can independently uh, move from each other, independently from each other. That's why we could say this system has two degree of freedom and these two mass has two, basically can have two different, uh, can move independently from each other. So two degree of freedom system and the approach is simple. We have to write equation of motion using a second Newton of law for each mass individually. So in order to do that, you can individually displace each mass and then apply the second Newton of law. So like this. And I want to consider a positive direction toward right. Therefore, I move the system toward this positive direction. So for the left mass, if I displace, so it is better to draw free body diagram for the Newton law. So if I displace the left mass to the left, the left spring will oppose the motion, minus kx1. And also the right spring will oppose the motion. So suppose here, just simply n as one and is a stiffness k for the sake of simplicity and it says when n is one. So n is given one in the question. So if I displace this mass to the right, the right spring also oppose the motion. However, if you take a look at here, the right spring is connected between the two points. So you have to use the relative motion. The total deformation applied to the right spring is the difference between the two point x1 and x2. Since we are moving the mass one to the right, we have to start from x1, not x2, basically. So the right spring will also oppose the motion minus k x1 minus x2 because we are moving this, the mass to the right. So x1 minus x2. And simply you could apply second unit of loss summation of momentum applied to the mass m is m 
x double dot one. So minus k x one minus k x one minus x two is going to uh, equal m x double dot and you could s simply simplify further this and you will reach to this equation m x double dot one plus two k two k x one minus k x two equal to zero just call this equation hold here equation one and simply uh, i mean similarly you could derive equation of motion for the right mass for a second mass second mass the right mass you can easily plot free body diagram so if I displace the second, the right mass to the right, the right spring will simply opposes the motion minus kx, and the left spring also opposes the motion minus x2 positive direction x1. So so again you can easily summation of forces applied to the mass is m x double dot two for the right mass so and the left spring will oppose the motion minus k x2 minus x1, right? x2 minus x1. Minus k x2 minus k x2 minus x1 is equal to m x double dot 2. If you further simplify it, similarly we have m x double dot two plus two k x two minus k x one is zero. So driving this equation are very very is very very important steps. So if I want to summarize uh, the steps, there are four or five steps to reach to the natural frequency and natural mode check try to uh, follow this step i will tell you at the end and i will uh, give you a recap so the first step is just deriving equation of motion m x double lot plus 2k x one minus k x two is equal to zero. M x double dot two plus two k x two minus k x one is zero. The second step is just transferring this linear equation into a matrix format. So we will transfer this equation in for a multiple degree of freedom system. The second step is just transferring into a matrix format. So simply you could say uh, in this format, I'm mass multiply by X double lot plus stiffness matrix X, which is equal to zero or external force. So for deriving equation of motion, at first we remove external forces. At the end, if you want to solve it, you could add any force for the case of force excitation. So, but for the natural frequency and natural motion, even if we have external force, you could neglect all the external force and imagine there is no any force and then 
uh, you will go for finding the natural frequency and natural motive, which are the natural property of the system, whether there is external force or it is not any external force. And you have to transfer linear motion, linear equation into this matrix format. Simply you could uh, transfer, since we have two masses, our matrices would be two by one and mass would be two by two, stiffness two by two, x two by one. Why to? So, you have to read each matrix, each equation. So, stiffness x, x2 equal to zero. So if you read in the first row, m x double dot one. So there is one x double dot. So there is no x double dot two in the first, first row, then you put zero here. So you will go for the first row, two k x one minus k x two. So two k x one minus k x two. Once you set up the first row, you will go for the second row. Mx double dot two. So there is no any x double dot one in the second equation. You simply put zero here and m here, and then easily take a look at to the second row and fill out this stiffness matrix as minus k minus k, 2k. So this is the second step. The step two, just writing in the equation of motion in matrix format. And step three, assuming harmonic motion. So x1 is x sine of omega t and x2 can be written as x2 sine of omega t. Therefore you could easily take derivative two times, x double dot one would be minus omega squared x one sine of omega t and x double dot two is minus omega squared x two sine of omega t. So you have to simply plug in x double dot one and x double dot two in this matrix equation and if I, and then a step four, derive and uh, constructing this matrix K minus M omega S squared, you could easily factor out the, so if I, if I plug in this X double dot one and X double dot two and factor out X one and X two, take factor out, then simply you will reach to this matrix, 2K minus M omega S squared minus K minus K, 2K minus M omega S squared x1, x2 equal to zero. 
So if you take a look at here, let's call it A, let's call it X. So AX is equal to zero. Therefore, X is going to zero is trivial solution. We know that if X zero, therefore, of course, there would be right hand sign zero, but we are looking for non-trivial solution. For a non-trivial solution, we are basically looking for the second case. A determinant of matrix A should be zero. And you construct a determinant and make it equal to zero. And the solution of this equation will give you the natural frequency. So you construct a determinant and calculate the determinant and then find the natural frequency. So if I have a matrix A, B, C, D, determinant of A would be A, D minus B, C. So determinant of the matrix would be two K minus M omega squared minus k squared equal to zero. So therefore, if I simplify it further, I'll have 4k squared plus m squared omega to the power four minus 4k m omega squared minus k squared zero. If I further simplify it, I'll reach to this equation. So you could divide it both sides of the equation, both sides of this equation by m squared for the sake of simplicity. Therefore, you will reach omega to the power four minus four k m omega squared plus three k squared equal to zero. So in order to solve this equation, all you have to do is just simplify it. So imagine and postulate, uh, assume omega squared is alpha, for example. Therefore, we could treat this equation with power four as a second order equation. So alpha squared minus 4k m alpha plus 3k squared so k m so you know how to solve second order equation like ax2 plus ax plus c equal to zero right x1 and x2 is minus b plus minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So you can easily find the two alpha 1 and alpha 2. Therefore, delta would be 4k m squared 4 1 3k squared m squared
which is equal to finally 4k squared m squared. So therefore omega n 1 squared or alpha 1 is going to be k over m. The first natural frequency of the system would be s square root of k over m and similarly the second natural frequency of the system can be easily obtained as 3k over m. The second natural frequency is So we are done with the natural frequency. And the next step in order to find the normal mode shapes or natural mode shape, all you have to do is just choosing one of the row in the matrix equation. Simply you could always choose the first row. So if I, if I write the first row, the first row of the equation, I mean this, here, you go back here, here. So choose one of these row and write write this like this. For the natural mode shape. I chose the first row like 2k minus m omega squared multiplied by x1 minus k x2 is equal to zero. Therefore, I can simply, simply write x1 over x2 is equal to k 2k minus m omega squared. So in order to find the normal mode shape, simply just plug in natural frequency. The first mode shape will be corresponding to the first natural frequency and the second mode shape will be correspond to the second natural frequency. So the first mode shape, x, simply we could show like this, x1 over x2, the first mode, the first mode. when omega is sub substitute by omega n1. K over 2K minus M omega n1 S squared would be K over M. So M by M will be canceled out. Therefore would be one. and second mode shape, and you could simply show it like this. It is better to show it like this. The first mode shape, x1, x2 is one, one. Why? Because, because you simply uh, reach to this point, x1, over x2 is one. Just simply give, give a denominator one. Therefore, it can be translated like this. If the mass displays like one magnitude, one meter, one centimeter, one millimeter, the second mass will also uh, move like this. x1, x2 is the first mode shape, first natural mode shape. So let's go for a second. Similarly, we could plug in back here. T 
second mode shape x1 over x2 just put 2k minus m omega n 2 squared Omega n2 is s square root of k over m s squared, 3k over m is minus 1. Therefore, x1 over x2 is minus 1. So you can simply give a Denominator one, therefore, the second mode shape would be so you could simply show this natural mode shape. You could give a geometrical interpretation, a geometrical interpretation. So So the, the first mode can be translated like this. So it means if the mass one, if the mass two comes here, the mass one also comes here. So these two will go here and here together, right? Like this, the first mode shape. And the second mode shape is like this. X1 over X2 is minus one. If one of them, for example, if the first one goes back to this position, the second one will go to the right. So like this. This, this is the second normal mode shape. So depend, depending on the initial condition, initial velocity, one of them will be dominated in the response. So what response is the summation of the two. Some part of the first mode shape and some part of the second mode shape and on total, you will have, you will see the response. And this is how you have to obtain natural frequency and then natural mode shape. And if we had three masses, which can be independently move from each other, we would have obtained three natural frequencies and three more chips. And you have to take this a step in order to simply find the natural frequency and natural mode chip. As you saw, you understood that the most important part is just deriving equation of motion correctly and safely. Otherwise the rest of your calculation would be wrong. So it is very important to double check your equation of motion before go further for obtaining the natural frequency. And th these are some typical question you will be asked in the final and, or simply you will be asked to drive equation of motion using Lagrange. You will uh, learn how to drive equation of motion in this chapter. Uh, it's very important. And one of your question would be Lagrange. So if you have any question, you can ask. Otherwise, we will go for next week for continuing and finishing chapter five and may start chapter six. Yeah, I have a question. If, um, yeah. if the second degree of freedom was, uh, was uh, actually a moment instead of uh, 
linear displacement, right? Um, how can we like, characterize that? We will just equate it to g over uh, g theta dot dot. Yes, the, uh, we, we will take, yes, the approach is the same. And I think we will solve some uh, like double pendulum. Okay. And the approach is the same. You could simply, you could simply for double pendulum, M1, L1, and so M2, and you could relate the theta one and theta, you could go for a Euler formula, but it is also very simple if you somehow, you could either use Euler formula or second Newton of law, both of them will work. But you could somehow relate rotational motion to the linear motion. And you could simply apply the second Newton of law in the two direction and find the uh, equation of motion which will be covered in the next, in the next session. We will solve uh, this uh, double pendulum. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. 5.75, 5 5.9 is a double pendulum. We will derive the equation of motion and find the natural frequency, 5.9. Next session, we will do that. So uh, did you pass the meter? When you have a meter? Next week on Tuesday. So the free vibration, force vibration and measure, uh, the vibration measurement, logarithmic decrement, these are the questions you will be asked in the exam and finding basically the equation of motion. If it is rotational, you may take advantage of Euler formula. If it is linear, you will go for second Newton of law. And of course, if you solve several problems, you, you can easily, uh, you will have no any problem in the exam. It, it would be very simple. Perfect. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So have a great day. See you next week.